My name is Kaylin Sheridan and I am the goalkeeper for Team Canada and the San Diego Wave. Five-year-old Kaylin got sparked for soccer. The passion came from um, being really shy. Knowing me now, people don't believe me at all, but I was an incredibly shy child and my parents threw me into a bunch of different sports. I did gymnastics, I was swimming. Anything that I would show up for, they would throw me into. And when I got to the soccer field, I just kind of took off. and loved scoring goals. <laughs> so um, I started as a forward, but I just fell in love with it. I think the transition from youth soccer into the US college system was, it was definitely massive. Um, it's different than what we have here in Canada, but unfortunately right now it's, it's the biggest option for scholarships, for the path forward in professional sports. You know, my parents are incredible, but obviously it's a commitment, a financial commitment. So I knew that I was gonna have to get that full scholarship. So I tried everything I could, different teams, different paths. And ultimately, I think because of all of the different things that I had to do, I learned a lot of different skills that prepared me for the heavy lifestyle of school and sports at the same time. Personally, having good people in my corner has made my my life's so much better and so much more fluid. I think it's presented me with so many opportunities to reach out for help because I wouldn't be where I am without my family, my, my friends, my teammates. They pick you up when you're down and, and you need that person who's gonna motivate and help you when the times are hard. A challenge that I've definitely had to overcome is injuries. And my biggest one was two years ago, the year of the Olympics. It was massive. The Olympics had been postponed um, to 2021. And I was riding this high of everything was kind of going really well for me. I was getting a lot of recognition and, um, and opportunities um, in my professional career. And I was really excited and, and confident. And I started a game against the US. And within the first 10 minutes, I tore my quad right off the bone. And I knew in that moment I could feel all of the emotion and it just took everything in me to, to make the decision to, that I was gonna have to come off the field and my team needed somebody who could get the job done 100%. And that was a really more emotional than physical pain for me because of everything that that moment meant to me of growing up, wanting to be in this position, finally getting there. I had six months to get ready for the Olympics and when I talked to all the doctors and surgeons and they gave me this little glimmer of hope, I said to the surgeon the day I went into surgery, you know, I need you to fix this in 92 days. And uh, he just laughed at me and I went into surgery and you know, he's a doctor. So he's just like, we're gonna get what we can get done, done. So sometimes you get knocked down and you, you get back up with the people around you and sometimes you don't. Getting the gold medal put around your neck is one of the most surreal moments. And I think we got a really special moment because they couldn't do it for us. We put it on each other. So we lined up and they would hand you a medal and you would put it on your teammate beside you. And I think having the person beside you who's been through everything you've been through, you know each other so well in that moment that you look in each other's eyes and you know everything was worth it. And then when they tell you to jump, <laughs> remember to hold on to it guys. When you guys get there one day, you will. Don't jump without holding it because you will knock your teeth out. <laughs> the moment I remember the most was laying on the ground with my teammates, all calling our family and all calling our friends and being on FaceTime in the middle of a soccer field that was completely empty. An opportunity came to me to be on the San Diego wave and to play in a new city and with a new team, a brand new club, um, and just kind of start from nothing. It was an opportunity to get out of my comfort zone a little bit, to make an impact in the league and make an impact on a club and be a part of something that I truly believed was capable of, of being great. And I think that's something we all want to do is, is be a part of an impact and a change. And this was my opportunity. So I was incredibly excited um, the first day walking in, but also terrified. There's these big names everywhere. Um, we have your Alex Morgans, your Emily Van Eggmans, your Casey Stoney's, your Jill Ellis. Like you're walking in and you're, and you're looking at these people thinking, do they even know my name? Am I gonna actually do anything here? Did I just make the biggest mistake? And I think the biggest thing for me walking in was 
just the realization that no matter what your name is or what you've done in the past, this is a brand new slate for everybody. We all have to now prove it again. And as much as I'm coming in there to prove something, so are they. We're already seeing the data, obviously, showing that people want it. It is a money-making industry. And it is going to be massive when we actually put the time and resources into it. We saw that the NWSL Championship just set the record um, for viewership in the US. We've seen that the World Cup next year is selling out. We've seen the, the WNBA. We have our former teammates working on creating an opportunity for women in Canada to see that there's a, a chance to play professional soccer here. We've never seen it here. And I think the biggest thing for us going forward is having those investments. And so we just need the opportunity to create the environments above the level of youth so that the kids coming up can see that there is an opportunity and have that dream and that desire and they have the ability. Nobody's saying they don't. The kids have the ability. I use my platform uh, to elevate and support the LGBTQ plus community Obviously because I, I'm a part of the community, um, I, I'm not shy about that in any way, but I was at one point. And I think it was hard for me to be open and to be honest about who I was and who I am. And I think that comes from stigma, from fear. And as much as people would always tell me growing up, my family, my friends, you know, the best way to be in this world is to just be yourself. My favorite candy is probably wine gums or fuzzy peaches because our best kept secret so far has not made it across the border. And so whenever I come home, I gotta pick up a pack. My favorite hobby is actually drawing um, or painting, just kind of zones me out and it just relaxes me quite a bit and I enjoy it. My favorite movie is The Proposal or anything Disney. Um, I love watching it with my nephew, so I, I watch it quite often. Um, but I love Ryan Reynolds and Sandra Bullock, so gotta support my home country boy. All right, my favorite song right now, um, because my San Diego Wave team, it got us pumped up all year, is My Heart Goes by Becky Hill. Any of her music got us going all year, got us ramped up for the game, so anytime I hear that going, I'm up on my feet. My favorite thing about my new city, San Diego, has to be taking some tacos to the beach. It has the most beautiful sunset in the world, and they have the best tacos. <laughs>